Hi, I'm a Madness to Method, um, but a lot of people know me as Sin, and that's fine. That's my name. So, anyway, um, I just wanted to talk about what I'm doing here. Normally, the way I do digital painting is I start just by throwing down the colors, the base colors, and then I put in like squiggles of whatever colors to help with my tones. The, the different colors, uh, the light colors, the dark colors. And that's how I started doing it back in 2019 when I was working with, um, I was teaching myself to digitally paint. I used paint.net and a mouse. And there were plugins that I would use. The one that I leaned heavily on was the smudge tool by Pyro Child. And I love that. Okay, I that blended things so beautifully. It would I could it was kind of like a combination of liquify tool, uh, smudge tool, blend tool. It had stretched the paint, it pushed the paint, it blended things. I could make it smooth or choppy, just whatever I needed. Oh my gosh, I love that so much. I have yet to find quite that same tool or combination of tools or settings in Clip Studio Paint. It may exist and I just haven't found it yet, but I'm, I'm still trying, I'm working on that. So part of the experiments here that I'm doing is trying to figure out how to do everything in Clip Studio Paint. Because what I had been doing since I started using Clip Studio Paint back in March of 2021, I think, because I couldn't, well, paint.net doesn't have sensitivity for stylus. And at the time, uh, when I first started using it, it didn't matter because I was using a mouse anyway. But once I got, um, I went to an Acer Spin 3, I think that's what it's called. And I was able to draw directly on the screen with a stylus and there was a little bit of pressure sensitivity. So with that new ability, um, Clip Studio Paint was on sale and I thought I would try it. And I found out that my shaky lines in paint.net were so much better in Clip Studio Paint. So I was hooked. Okay. And, um, and currently I'm using a Wycom uh, Cintiq, which is what I'm using to do this, to the, not, not tutorial, this painting. Um, anyway, so I found that I had more options with Clip Studio Paint, but I didn't have all of the same tools in Clip Studio Paint that I had in Paint.net. So what I was doing for a while was I was taking, um, I had a plugin so that I could save um, and open Photoshop files. Now I don't currently use Photoshop, but I save my files as a Photoshop file because I can open that file both in paint.net and Clip Studio Paint. So what I was doing is I was saving files as um, Photoshop files and then I would work a little bit in each program and swap it back and forth. Like I would start laying down my colors in paint.net and um, then I would go over to Clip Studio Paint to do like finer details and things and flip back and forth. The problem with this is that there are layer blend modes, which I was starting to learn to use because I didn't use those back when I was just doing paint.net and a mouse. Um, I didn't have fancy brushes or any of that. I just, I figured out how to do, make, if I wanted something to happen, I had to figure out how to do it. And that meant a lot of using the same round brush and carving into it with an eraser of different opacity to, you know, basically do what I was going to do. And a lot of contrast. I used a lot of high contrast because um, I have visual problems and the higher contrast helps me, um, which I think that may be something you kind of see the way that, that I use colors is based on my vision. Like, and I don't mean like artistic vision. I mean how I physically see things. So, um, anyway, the blend modes on Clip Studio Paint, some of those don't exist in um, paint.net. So when I would save the file in Clip Studio Paint and throw it over to paint.net, what would happen is that it would replace whatever blend mode that didn't exist um, with some other blend mode. Like um, 
if I would put add glow, it would just put add in paint.net, which sounds the same, but it's not. It's not the same. It, it the, the values are different. You can tell if, if you happen to have both tools or just even one, just put something on your screen and, um, compare flip between add and add glow you'll see the difference uh, but that's not the only one that's just an example so anyway um i was trying to because it's just so much so cumbersome to flip back and forth and i mean i can do that but i found out <clears throat> that um clip studio paint has a time lapse feature built in which is really nice, but you have to remember to do that. And sometimes I don't remember to do that, but this time I did. And, <laughs> but if you save it and throw it to another program, you don't get to record that progress. So I was also trying to experiment with, um, the, with doing a, a sketch, a, a sketch outline. Okay. And, um, I don't usually do that not for digital paintings. I, I, I did a sketch, I did sketches on my canvas when I was doing traditional painting because I used to paint with oils and acrylics and watercolors and stuff. So, I mean, I came into digital art with that background. So that, that helped with, as far as, you know, seeing in my mind's eye what I want to do and then figuring out how to do that. And I try to approach from that, that painterly, um, uh, technique because that's, I do a lot of blending as you can see um and what i was doing there is like some layer modes and things that i put a layer multiply layer over the whole thing and then carved out with the eraser and then did some smudging around that to up the contrast and get more depth but um yeah so anyway i don't usually do this the pre-sketch on my digital paintings because I don't want to say it limits me, but it felt like it because before I was just throwing down colors and then um, smudging them and pushing them and dragging them and carving what I wanted out of them without having to worry about lines being in the way or having to change that. And I'm sure there's easy ways to do this or whatever, but for me, it has been a lot more difficult to work with the lines because, um, it's part of me wants to fill in the line properly even if i know when i'm looking at it that's not what i want anymore because honestly sometimes my composition changes while i'm in it as you can see with you'll you'll notice look at the the soap suds now i had originally had a different plan and it's gonna the plan is gonna change again towards the end which you'll see and my lines wouldn't reflect that um i changed the hair my lines don't reflect that and but still I'm I'm not dissatisfied I, I actually I do like some of the stuff that I've done with lines so far like a pre-sketch but I might still go back and forth between just laying down the color and laying down a sketch I do like that if I do the pre-sketch I can have that to show to be like look this is this is where I think I'm going, it may still shift. So that's kind of helpful as far as me doing collaborations because I can be like, look, this is what I'm, where, I'm, where I'm at with this. And that, that's helpful. But overall, it's, you just do what, what makes you happy. You know, um, at the end of the day, it's, you do whatever you gotta do to get that picture up. And, um, and that's, that's the main thing. And see, I got the little bubbles everywhere. Anyway, that's me. Thanks for watching.